Good morning and welcome to our lesson today. We're going to be talking about our beliefs in Jesus Christ and what that means to you and to me. We each one have come up in different ways. Many of us have heard different sermons. We have heard sometimes people say, well, I believe this. Someone else believes something differently. So today we're going to take a look at these things uh, that are recorded from John. Remember John, the apostle of love? Today our lesson is going to come from 1 John chapter 5, and we're going to start with verses 1 through 5, and then we'll read some more later. John wrote this, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him. Who is that? That's Jesus. Verse 2 says, This is how we know that we love God's children. When we love God and obey his commands. John loves that word love. Many years ago, I was talking to a young woman who worked for me. She was a good worker, and I enjoyed chatting with her for a little bit. I asked her about her daughter. She said, yes, she's doing very well. She said, I love her very much, but I don't like her. My, my, my. Have you ever had a teenager that did things that you didn't like? Well, I don't know that you'd put it as strongly as that lady did to me, but sometimes... Folks do things that are not likable. But we are told that if we love God, we're going to love his children. And so that's something we need to focus on. Verse 3 says this, For this is what the love for God is, to keep his commands. God asks certain things of us. And we are expected to follow that. It is a requirement. It's not one of those things you have a choice about some of his commands. One of them is, if you wish to get to heaven, you have to accept Christ as your Savior. That's it. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. And in it, his commands are not a burden. Verse 4 says, because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has been conquered the world, our faith. Who is the one who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Paul wrote this in Romans chapter 10, verse 11. Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Jesus will never make us be shameful children of his. When we trust God, we won't be disappointed. In John's gospel, he said that in order to be saved, we must be born of God. To love God without loving his children is impossible. They may not be like them all the time, but we're required to love and to show love to God's children. God's commands are not heavy. They do not crush the freedom that love brings. Jesus stated, For my yoke is easy and my burden is life. That's what Matthew recorded in chapter 11, verse 30. God has given the believers the power to overcome the forces of temptation. Are you ever tempted? Probably so. But we have the power to overcome them. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Jesus overcame the devil by destroying his works. Therefore, we can overcome the world by our faith in Jesus. Jesus said this about the Spirit. Those who believe will receive the Holy Spirit. When did you receive the Holy Spirit? Well, that probably varies. 
when we make that profession of faith that we truly believe that, then we can and do receive the Holy Spirit. Now, there was once a Roman Catholic priest and a Southern Baptist preacher together for a little bit. And the priest said this, and it's very interesting. He said, your religion is the easiest to get into and mine's the hardest. But yours is the hardest to live up to and ours is the easiest. Think about that for a minute. If you are a Roman Catholic, if you are Anglican or Episcopal here in America, if you're part of the United Methodist Church or Presbyterian, when you are born, you are taken to church and a priest or with the Methodist and Presbyterian minister will baptize you. They usually take a flower and sprinkle it on your bald head. <laughs> yeah, y'all look like me. Well, without a mustache going. That is a signification that you have been baptized. And because of that, you are entered on their church role as being a member of that church. It's there. Now, that is just part of being Roman Catholic. Now, people of Southern Baptist, Church of God, other evangelicals, they don't do that. We folks in this category have what we call parent dedication or maybe baby dedication, but we don't consider it a sacrament. We simply consider it a time for parents to dedicate a child to God, just as Samuel's mother dedicated him to God. And as a part of that, we have, sometimes it's called christening, sometimes it's just infant baptism, if you want to call it that. But you do not go on the church roll. That can happen only at a later time. Now, these are things that are required, of course, as an infant, you don't know very much about this. If you were an infant male and you're circumcised, either at either one, you don't, you don't remember that. You don't know, it's, it just happened when you were seven or eight days old, or maybe at birth. Things are different, though, as you grow up in one of the other churches. For instance, if you want to be Come on, member. Not if you want to. You are expected to do this. You go to school at your church or whatever you call it. And you have with Catholics, a priest, to explain to you what their beliefs are and what they consider the sacraments. I understand they have several of them that I had one time I studied them all, I knew them, extreme mumption was the last one, so forth and so on. But this is part of learning about their church and about accepting Christ. And so the same thing is true with people in the Episcopal Church. Same thing is true as a Methodist, I went to church uh, weekly, we usually uh, had some lecture time, some discussion time. We got out and played a little bit, had some refreshments. But we did that until we learned the basics that John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, even though he was an Anglican priest, and that's how he was buried, these were the things that we had that made us a little bit different. Now, Baptism occurs again later for either of us. 
whether you are a part of the group that has strict requirements or whether you happen to be an evangelical or a Southern Baptist, Church of God maybe, and you just say, okay, I believe in Jesus. And so that's it. Now, sometime later, you are going to be taught some of the basics of your church beliefs and of the interpretations made of the Bible, the Word, so to speak, to learn about Christ who is considered the Word because He is and that's what we accept. Now, this priest said, yours is the hardest to live up to. Why is it so hard to live up to that? Because we have expectations from God that commands us to do certain things. The others are easy. If you mess up, you go to a priest. I don't know whether they have confession like they used to or not, but at one time you went to the confessional box, you confessed, you said so many Hail Marys, and bang, that was, that, that was your penance for whatever sin you'd committed. But Southern Baptist and some evangel evangelicals believe that we're our own priest. We can go to God. We do not have to go to a minister. We go directly to God. We pray to Jesus Christ. We don't pray to Mary. We pray to Jesus, God's Son, and we ask things of him, and we ask things in his name. Jesus said in Matthew, whatsoever things you ask in my name, believing you will receive. Does that always work? Yes. Of course, everybody says, God knows what we need. And he does things in his own way, in his own time. But the lock on everything that we do is focused on Jesus. We have a choice. We can follow his commands or not follow them. Let's read further. We'll get down to verse 11 and it says, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. In Titus chapter one, verses one through three, we know our salvation is secure because of God's promise and God does not lie. God says, if you accept my son, I will provide for you a new life at the end of this one. You will be with my son and with me in paradise. Hmm. Think about that. Verse 12 says, the one who has the son has life. The one who does not have the son does not have life. There's only one way to eternal life, except Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's the only way. There are others today that tell you, well, you can do it by good works. The Gnostics, oh, they had their own idea. Well, Jesus is, he's part spiritual, but he's part carnal too. So, you know, it depends on what part of life he was in. Jesus was both man and God, and that's what we recognize, and that's what we serve. Verse 13 said, I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Here's what Peter wrote. First Peter chapter 1, then verse 18. For you know that you were redeemed from your unblemished and spot, excuse me, and perishable things like gold or silver, but the precious blood of Christ, that's how you were redeemed, like that of an unblemished and spotless lamb. In Deuteronomy, Moses said this, chapter 30, verse 15. See, today I have before you life 
and prosperity, death and adversity. Friends, the choice is up to you and me as believers as to whether we accept him or don't. Now, as we go on to verse 18, it says, we know that everyone who has been born of God does not sin, but the one who is born of God, he keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. Satan and his demons are around us all the time. Jesus, our Savior, can help us overcome them any time they are near tormenting us. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know the true Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, guard yourself against idols. We'll focus on that in a minute. Jesus protects Christians and Satan can't touch them. I remember a preacher who said he was in Chicago once and he got in a part of town that he shouldn't have been in and he walked in and there were poor men there and there was nobody around. And he said, I just said to myself, Lord, this must be my time to go. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And he said, all of a sudden, the fire alarm went off and everybody scattered. No one knows how that fire alarm started, but the man himself knew God did that. Jesus can protect you. We have to talk with him. We need to talk with him regularly. We need to study his word. We need to grow and develop our skills. And we need to grow and develop our love and display it to many folks. Jesus is our source of victory. It's no wonder that Jude wrote this, chapter 24, Verse 25, now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Christ Jesus, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, authority before all time now and forever. We believers live in uncertain times today. And in this world, certainly we can have our confidence shaken, shaken a lot. The tr truth that we have near and dear to our hearts, uh, it comes to question. But despite all these terrible circumstances, we have a confident faith, both in the life today and the one to follow this life. Because it rests on an assured, intimate relationship with God. Do we need to guard ourselves from idols? Yes, and from evil. How do you do that? You try to avoid those situations where that will happen. When I was in work for us, periodically, after work, folks like to go to the bar. I've been to bars. Well, a couple of things I noticed, this is a practical. You can't really talk in a bar, it's too noisy. I guess those that go a lot probably do, but I don't like going to the bar just because it's noisy, whether or not I drank or not. It didn't, didn't matter. It's just a noisy place. Let's go have fellowship somewhere outside of the bar. That's my choice. You can make your own. Is it forbidden to drink wine? No. In Christ's day, wine was part of the ordination of us as we take communion. Now, Many of you don't. What's that old saying? Lips that touch liquor never touch mine. <laughs> and that's what the girls were supposed to say. Well, in small church we were in, when it first started, the pastor Ron West, 
he allowed one of the fellows there to prepare for communion and he made wine. And I understand from those who partook of that that it's pretty good wine. Well, the deacons had a meeting afterwards and all of them said, hey, wait, you know, and they, they discussed it. This is common and it's good and we can do that. There was one fellow that didn't say much and I finally said, well, what are your thoughts on it? And he said, I just wonder if we can get bigger cups next time. Of course, that's an amusing way of saying I find it acceptable. There are things that we can deny ourselves of. Yes, there are alcoholics in the world. Yes, there are people who are on drugs in the world. Yes, there are people who do lots of things that they shouldn't be. Many of us may have come up that way, but God provides us an opportunity to learn more about him, to be more worshipful, and as a result, we can learn to live more effectively under his commands. How do you do that? In every place Mary Ruth and I have lived, we have gone to church. We went to church and got to know people in the church. And we love to have fellowship with those people. We didn't exclude ourselves from all others. Some of our neighbors enjoyed this, some of them didn't. We live next to neighbors that would just barely speak to you. We live in a community now that has very few children in it. And so most everybody just sort of keeps to themselves. Yes, I, I sometimes remember those early days when we went out to play early in the day and stayed out all day and came in before dark and nobody worried about us. Today, people don't do that. They stay in their house and they use these things and other things all day. Whether that's good or not, it's not for me to say, but one of the things that we have to recognize, if you totally commit yourself to television every day, if you totally commit yourself to just doing housework and then commenting about it or complaining about it, then, that's not Christ-like. We were meant to enjoy things. Can you do that in a dirty house? Yeah, I expect you can. You can clean it up. And friends, I'll tell you something. Fellow Christians will help you with things that you need. As I get older, I find more and more, especially from our children and grandchildren, they do things for me that I used to do for them. Oh, Dad. I'll take you over here. Yeah, I'll drive. Okay. Now you can make whatever you want of that. But it's also important as Christians that the love that John talked about, that the love that we have for Christ, we convey to our family and that we keep up with them, that we meet with them, we stay in touch and we look for ways to grow and develop. Do we lose family members from time to time from Christianity? Yes. One of the great concerns I have is that as I look down past our children that all of our grandchildren don't necessarily go to church regularly. Sometimes not all. Just like so many others. They learn the basics. I believe in time that each of them that have accepted Christ will return to that, but you get out of the habit of it. Yes, and not all church services are what you want it to be. And sometimes you, you may not like this or that or the other. Well, find a church where you can enjoy the fellowship that you have in learning about God from the pastor and the others and the fellowship of fellow Christians. That's what John was trying to say to us. And it's his message on love. But it all begins with recognition of Jesus as being our Savior. It's been great to be with you this morning. And I hope you will continue to uh, stay with us whenever possible. 
And I think after about a year and a half, I've gotten a little bit better. At least I'm keeping it down in reasonable times. And so I, I trust that you will remember that. Father in heaven, it's so good to be here with others who believe in your son. We pray that we may all be blessed as we study your word, as we pray to you, and as we love each other, especially our families and you. And we ask this all and we give thanks in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Have a great day.